Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. We are back at the Barn Dominium build. A lot of you have been asking what's going on with that project. Are you guys gonna finish the inside? And the answers, answer, yes, we are going to finish the Barn Dominium. We waited for you know other subcontractors that were waiting on other things to get in here and get their job done. We went off and built a 72 by 96 workshop. That was a cool project to do while we were waiting for that stuff. But now that we're back here, we're installing the kitchen cabinets. So if that interests you guys, if you wanna see how this all turns out, definitely make sure that you are subscribed, hit that little button, and um, let's go ahead and just get into this kitchen install. So the thing we've been really struggling with, or at least we've been spending our time with, is getting this cabinet set close enough that we could plumb it up and check it so that we could then check where our panels return. They're gonna to have to be attached to this cabinet. It's gonna be a little bit tricky. There's no real good way, but now that we have everything kind of figured out where everything is supposed to be, we're gonna go ahead and get some cleats attached to our walls so that we can attach our panels, get our cabinet set, and then once this first cabinet is set, it's easy, man. We're just gonna start going left to right. Also had Greg go around and he checked the elevation of all this concrete because, you know, it's not perfect. And luckily for us, this is our high spot right here. So when we start with our first cabinet, it'll be the highest cabinet and then everything will get shimmed up to that height as we go down our ways. It's kind of nice because we wanted something laser straight. So we actually grabbed a piece of LP smart side trim, five quarter. It's gonna go against the wall here. And then when our panel gets slapped up here, it'll be perfectly straight and right where we gotta put it. All right, so we got this first panel on and it was a learning curve for us. We made some blocks. We took some LVL and these two screws are coming into this panel right here with these cabinet screws and then we're screwing into the sidewall. This is an inch and an eighth thick, so we've got a lot of meat. So we've got five of these blocks fastened up here, bottom, middle, top, and then middle middles, and that's gonna keep that nice and secure so we can push this back. We're gonna have to lift it a little bit, uh, back against these cleats that we installed on the wall. So we're just wrapping these up. We've got three more to do. All right, you ready? Yeah. You like it? Hmm, good. Good? Yeah. Awesome. Well, another thing that we did was we set the cabinet where we, you know, the best we could where it was supposed to be, used the laser, got it all set, and then we plumbed it up and put shims underneath of it. Then what we did was we cut the shims off and taped them to the bottom of the cabinet where they belong. So hopefully when it goes back into its position, it's already plumbed and pretty darn good. So uh, this is one of those deals where pretty hard to get it perfect because of all the different, um, you know, positions you have to get it in to check. So like we weren't very, we were not able to scribe these to the wall, but luckily these walls are really flat. If you can slide paper behind there, I think it's gonna be okay because you're gonna have to come over here and look down the wall and have light shining back there because it's a really nice tight, tight gap. I think we got pretty lucky. All right, let's take that back then and get that to, the, to our block there. One, two, three. Can you squeeze out of there? You got about eight inches there. Try to slide this in that way. One, two. One, two, three. I got my, my pencil mark right there. Pencil mark right there. And pencil mark right there. So if we did our mark layout right. All right, that's a good start. That's exactly what I wanted to do was get this corner cabinet installed. We got the two flanking cabinets installed as well, attached to that, starting nice and plumb. We got the new Stabila 600G. That's a cross line level laser. It's great, it can give you all the different plumb and level lines. We're gonna be able to see exactly where everything has to be so that it can maintain the perfect elevation. All right, so we've got all of our cabinets getting laid out here ahead of me. I just like to take a, an extra shim just because it's very 
nice and visual. And then we can work it up so that the laser is right there. And then what I'm gonna do is take my clamps. I always like to put my screws on like a drawer side. So you see how these are gonna be drawers? If I screw in from this side, you're never gonna see that screw. When you open a door here, you would see your screws. Not that it really matters, but just something to consider. Putting that masking tape on there leaves the finish looking really nice. Perfect, 60 inches. That is exactly what I wanted. And about the bottom, 60 exactly, so good to go. A Little bit of modification, no big deal though. That's why you get an extended style on some of your cabinets. Do it thoughtfully, so like we did an extended style on both of these, so that I could take away the same amount from both and get the same reveal here versus one of the cabinets having a bigger reveal than the other. I need to find my studs, which hmm, if only I knew who framed this wall and could decipher in his brain what he was thinking, my guess. Should be. Go above the line, it's always easier. And then you're gonna look at the line down low. Wait, actually, I think it's right there, dude. Wait, are you sure? It's down just a smidge. Yeah, I think so. Okay. You can always adjust later, but I like that a nice little starting point. Now what I'm worried about, I'm not worried, but yeah, I'm not worried, but this here has got to line up here. See, so this is where the panel is going. So that looks pretty darn close. You won't know until we put the panel up. That's that guy right there. We already know that this is a three inch extended style on this guy. So we want to be 51. So this is 49 and three quarters. 
which means you want to take an inch and a quarter off of this side over here. So I need to make a little scribe block and then scribe this guy over here. All right, so we got this cabinet plumbed up and we're tight here. We're fairly tight here and we're tight up top. So we need to make it tight the whole way. I'm gonna run some blue tape down the face so that my marker shows up when I go ahead and hit the scribe line. Put it up, dude. Let's see how it did. One, two, three. It's definitely not, I was gonna say, it's definitely not in. Uh, it might not be level. We might need to bring the top out, remember? Oh. Uh, I think I like it. Oh, cool. I'm not gonna complain about Let's that. get this clamped. Watch your level. You know, one thing that scares me is I reach into this box of screws that are two inches and I accidentally grab a two and a half that I threw in there in accident. Oh, okay. And then I go right out in the front. That All right, these pipes are an indication that we've got an island here and I've got the last of the cabinets right here still boxed up. This is a 13 foot set of cabinets, but then the island is even bigger yet. So we've got like a five by 17 foot island. Um, you can be able to sit all the way around this thing. So what I need to do is get some marks on the ground, figure out where it's gonna go, build myself a wall because there's gonna be a supporting wall that all these cabinets are gonna get mounted to. And then the countertop people will do all of the legs and the additional stuff. But first thing I need to do is get the layout down so I know exactly where this is getting installed. And what I've done is I've gone around and I've pulled some measurements off of walls to get these points where I've laid some blue masking tape and uh, it's giving me basically a, a point to reference so I can set this laser up and I'm lining it up over here. And what that's gonna do is gonna give me a nice crisp line, a nice straight line without having to snap a line where I'm going to install this half wall. And then I can install the cabinets back to it. I've clearly got a little bit of extra hose from the plumber I gotta cut away. I can cut these pipes down a little bit and then that cabinet will set on there. But my goal is to get this sink base lined up across from this window so that it can be, you know, centered on something. So what I've come up with mathematically is 75 and 3 eighths of an inch is where I want this cabinet to start. So I've got my laser line on the ground and we're going to mark 75 3 8 Now what I'm doing is starting away from the laser and I'll work towards the laser. That way I don't cover up my laser. You know, years of experience has taught me that that's a good way to go because I've messed up before started by the laser, worked away, and then my laser got covered up. Now, because we have a radiant heated floor, we're gonna wanna make sure, obviously, that we don't go too deep. So we're gonna set this guy. It's about as deep as we're gonna go. Also, when you're doing such a precise um, depth, the vacuum is very important because it cleans that hole out and allows you to utilize all of the depth of the hole versus it filling in and needing to drill deeper um, so that your faster can go in. It looks like this is the highest point, which we already kind of knew that. And once we get the first one set, they do get easier because we kind of build off of that. But this first one, we got to get set perfectly level plumb and then fastened to this wall. 
All right, so I've got a screw holding my bottom plate. And now what I'm going to do is just go ahead and I'm gonna move this plumb and then get it fastened. And hopefully that holds kind of where I wanna be. Okay, so now we're plumb. Okay, we're just gonna make sure that we're right where we wanna be, which man, we look pretty darn good. Now we're gonna go ahead and get these screwed. Okay, those were the easy cabinets, and those are now rock solid. Um, now we gotta space the dishwasher and then get this sink base figured out. We got all these pipes to figure out. And we've also gotta figure out cutting for the sink here, which is gonna be fun. All right, so my first order of business is I'm trying to manage these pipes a little bit better. And so I got this guy cut down and these are what's gonna actually end up coming through the bottom of the cabinet. This here is an electrical conduit, so I'm gonna also cut that down below the cabinet. It's not coming into the cabinet itself. This is drain waste and vent. And then we've got some, uh, I think this is a water supply coming in, and then this is going to an outdoor hose bib over there, and this goes, I believe, to the ice maker. So we don't want these going up into the cabinet, so I'm gonna be very careful and I'm just cutting this down. So now that we have that done, we can go ahead and get some marks, get this all laid out so it comes through the cabinet kind of nice and clean. second set of hand this would be really easy okay a little bit of support one two come on I'm surprised I got them in there, if I'm being honest. I think I ended up pretty good. These pipes look pretty good. I got my hot on my left, cold on my right, the supply, and then the hose bib and the ice maker. So, you know what? We moved this back about six inches. Otherwise, this was gonna be back here on the back side of the cabinet, but it is what it is. We gave more room in the counter, in between the two counters, and uh, that's gonna work out just fine. All right, now that we've got that sink cabinet installed, we've got all those pipes perfectly placed through the holes. And this was my last cabinet that I just installed. Now the island is done. All the kitchen cabinets are installed. I do have this sink, which this is a copper um, farmhouse sink. So this is an apron that's gonna sit out front and I knew that I would have to cut this out right here. This whole front's gonna have to get cut out, but I just wasn't ready to do that. Now that we have all these cabinets installed, counters can get measured, and I'm gonna go ahead and get going on this pantry. 
it's a heck of a large pantry and we've got a bunk of cabinets going across this with a countertop and these are extra deep. So I got to do a little bit of frame out and there's going to be a 30 inch countertop instead of your standard 24s. There you go. Kitchen, cabinetry, installed. It's going to be crazy when that five foot by 16 foot island top gets set on there. Got the range over here. It's going to be a hood. Got the uh, monster fridge freezer combo there. So, yep, yeah, it's coming together. All right, so in a couple days, they're actually going to be coming to measure out these countertops. So these are going to be a soapstone countertop. And before they do that, I need to finish the last thing in this kitchen, which is cutting out this sink base to fit this copper sink. So this is a farmhouse sink. Um, I'm never really a fan of doing this because I have to cut out of this cabinet. It's a perfectly good looking cabinet. And I got to modify it. I got to do a little bit of additional framing. So this is going to be an undermount sink. So I've got a frame, set this in, and then when the countertop people come, they can measure exactly where they are cutting out the countertop to sit over top that sink. You know, it is really nice because then when you're cleaning your countertops, you can just kind of push everything right into the sink. There's no lip on your sink, which is awesome. So what I need to do is I need to get some dimensions for this sink, which is 40 inches wide. And this cabinet that we're cutting into is 42 inches. So what we're gonna do is find the center of the cabinet, 21, and then I'm just gonna arbitrarily set my tape at 31. I'm gonna add to it. And I do that because it's easier to mark um, in on the tape instead of all the way out on the end. And remember, 40 inches, but we gotta come in an inch and seven eighths on each side. So we're gonna measure in an inch and seven eighths. The center is at 31. We gotta add 20 inches because it's a 40 inch sink, which will put us at 51 minus inch and seven eighths, which is 49 and an eighth. And then I gotta determine the height and nine and a quarter. So now we have to cut down nine and a quarter. Now the nice thing is there is this, this apron wraps around and butts into the face of the cabinet. So I don't have to be perfect. I gotta cut it out, keep it nice and snug but it's not gonna be a visible cut, which is, oh, that's awesome. I was afraid, I don't like to have to do that, sand it, make it perfect. Um, this is gonna allow me to be a little bit rougher, but still good. And I think what I'm gonna do, now that I've determined where this is, we're gonna go ahead and install some masking tape on the face of this cabinet. One, because it allows me to mark it better, and two, when I make my cuts, it'll do a cleaner job and not splinter up the cut of the cabinet. So there we go. I'm cutting a lot out of this cabinet, but that is why they give me this massive piece to cut out of. Did you know that when, like, let's say I wanna just score this. Did you know this? Now I'll only go in a score. So if you push this in, now it's just a score depth. That way you can keep this at the depth you want to go all the way through. I did not know that. Well, buddy, you stick around me. I'm gonna teach you some things, okay? So we're just gonna score this first. Thanks for sacrificing your S22 Ultra. That's not good for a blade like this, you know? That metal. Did you see it? Now I should just have to connect the dots with the old jigsaw.
so I've got a line here. That's where the sink flange is, and it needs to sit down the top of the flange flush with the top of the cabinet. So I've got a router out. Ooh, that actually would have been... Greg, a router would have been good, too. I could have set the router at an eighth inch. That might actually be the smartest thing to do because then I can just go mm, and be done. making sure we like this, we're good. So now we're gonna go ahead and use some Lexel. I just like it, it's a good adhesive. And we're gonna make a bunch of circles. Circles kind of actually like, act like suction cups. This is just to avoid fasteners as much as possible. Just hit it around the perimeter. And then I'm just going to use a brad nailer, put some brads in around the frame. Looks nice and straight and then I'll let that, uh, that'll harden up. Now I can't do this back panel quite yet because electrician has to run some wiring. So Nick here from Select. What was it? Select Surfaces. Select Surfaces, and he was brought in by Michael, which Michael is the cabinet guy. I've been actually buying cabinets from him for, I don't know, 15 years? Yeah. Maybe? Franklin Park, Kyle. Okay, so Select Surfaces from Franklin Park, and I've never seen this, so I thought you guys might also have never seen it. He's got all these dots, and typically when I've seen this, they have like a little laser system set up on a tripod, and then they measure all of the different points. But all Nick is doing is taking a picture with a digital camera of all the different, I don't know, what do you have like a, a specific order of picture taking or are you just taking yeah, a ton? So you basically start with your one card and you get three shots of a one card and you'll start from the left, you work your way to the right, connecting each card to each dot. So you would connect a two and a four, four and a five and so on, and then group all of them together working back. Um, and then that basically will make sure that you pick up every single dot so that you can triangulate your system and then plug it into our CAD. Awesome, and so then once you got it in your CAD, I mean, you can CNC cut your countertops perfectly. Yeah, perfect, it will pick up every formation of your wall, cabinet, if it's, this is out further than that one, it's gonna cut it to the exact dimension. You don't have to back cut anything, it's, it's gonna be perfect. So when you get that drawing, like is that something that you could send to me and I would see how flat my walls are? Yeah, absolutely. It'll show oh. on our CAD system how far out it's bowed, everything within, oh. within a 30 second. How off my countertops are? You're not, you're not, you're not looking for level We're at all. Looking for level. Um, that's basically I'm the contractor. Um, okay. So. Yikes. That's me then. I think they're pretty good. I use the laser, so that's pretty cool. So these cards have to be a certain distance and position in order to do this. But then that's it. Just a nice digital that's picture and. Within. 36 inches of each other and each dot has to be within 18 to roughly 22 inches and wow. that's it. It's huh. Is everybody, is, it, is this like the way everybody's doing it then? We are one of the only companies in the Chicago land area that does this. Nice. I like that. Like to specialize, be the best and invest in the right, you know, tool and equipment, right? Yeah, that's absolutely. awesome. Um, we try to be, you know, top notch with everything. All of it is the most, you know, recent things that people are using. So. Now, are you going to be out here when it gets installed or no? I won't be on the install. Okay, so if there's any problems, we won't, we'll have to blame problems, Nick. You don't remember <laughs> cool, well, definitely I'll bring you guys back along when they come because this, this countertop right here, I think it's going to be two pieces. It has to because it's 16 by 5, and they said the biggest slab they do is 125 inch, you said? Yep. 
Okay. Roughly. And this is going to be a massive one, so pretty cool. We'll uh, we'll be back to the kitchen install when the countertops come in a couple weeks. But just wanted to share that with you guys. I think that's pretty darn cool. I've never seen that, and uh, I'm assuming a lot of you guys haven't seen that as well. But then again, maybe you have, and I'm just way behind on times. You know, back in the day, you just come out and measure distance, and then come out and sand everything down. But uh, Greg, he said he'll be able to he'll be able to give us the sheet that shows exactly the wall really? and how straight it is. Yeah, he'll be able to have a digital drawing of every cabinet, how far it's out, if it's wavy. Be pretty cool to see how accurate. That's, we are. that's a, yeah. I, I feel like we did a good job, but we're gonna find out.